Name a business where your talents could be worth a million pound deal, where your products sold by the thousand and earned you fan mail from all over the world. An industry dominated by teenagers who could retire as millionaires by 25. And where a garage full of smart cars, luxurious offices and hype are the name of the game. Computer games now mean big money. And if all the hype sounds just a bit like the pop industry, perhaps it's no coincidence that it's a young Liverpool group that currently tops most of the charts. And the similarities don't stop there. The typical computer game buyer is the male teenager who traditionally buy pop records. He's now spending all his uh, disposable income on computer games. Um, they tend to follow sort of craze buying, where I think nowadays um, most of our customers buy all of our games as they come out, no matter how many we produce. And I think this is the trend now, just as they follow pop groups. Just as well-designed record sleeves sell albums, it's reckoned that artful packaging is going to sell the games cassettes. Basically, we feel that everybody's going to want to take the box home and collect them, such as you collect books or records and stack them neatly on the shelf. Your most successful game is Arcadia. What do you think are the ingredients that make a hit game? Uh, I think they're very elusive. You can't pin them down. Uh, it's very, very difficult to, to, to write a, a best-selling game, just as, as to write a best-selling pop record. Do you get much feedback from your, from your customers? Yeah, we get a lot of letters. We get a lot of letters praising the games asking for autograph posters and so on. Uh, they want the autograph of the author of the game? Yes. Ian, how long have you been writing computer games? Uh, about four years. Once you've written a hit game, do you feel under pressure that the next one's got to be better or as good as? Oh, yes, as? they've all got to be better than the last one. That's the main feature, which makes it quite difficult. A certain amount of pressure, but the rewards are there as well, you see. I'm writing a game at the moment, and I'm, you know, the, the back of my mind all the time is whether it's going to be as good as the last one. Because people expect it of you, and they, they, they do really. Yeah. And the, the critics in, in the magazines, the first thing they'll say if it's not as good as the last one is it's not as good as the last one. There's a big problem with illegal taping in the music business. Do you suffer from pirating in this business? Pirating of uh, computer cassettes you know, is a big problem. You can take safeguards against uh, people copying them from the computer. Uh, they can put security checks in. Uh, audio, audio copies are a bit more difficult, but I've heard figures quoted from anything from five to twenty copies are made of one of our uh, tapes that sold, that's a big loss in revenue. Do you see any parallels between what you do and uh, the job a pop performer does? I don't see myself as a pop performer, I don't see myself in that same sort of way. Um, I feel more of a backroom boy, I suppose. Pop stars obviously tend to be extrovert, whereas programmers don't. Mm. In the main, they sort of keep to themselves. I've met many programmers who are motivated by personal success in that they get from other programmers the, uh, the recognition of having done something incredibly complicated. And there are many others who just do it because they couldn't, wouldn't dream of doing anything else. It's what they live for. But I've never met anybody who actually wants to be a star. It had to happen sooner or later. Big record companies like Virgin, threatened by falling record sales, are now in on the game too and unashamedly promoting their young programmers just as they would pop stars. Now about 15, in addition to being a computer addict, plays a synthesizer in a local pop group, Steve. The cassettes come complete with biographical details to help attract cult followings for the programmers. Brennan's 16, and his hobbies are skiing, karate, and squash. Well, I first got my computer about two years ago, but really it's only in the last year that I've started to actually write games seriously. I'm looking forward to it quite much about the sort of advertising and the star. I think it's a nice idea. I don't know if the postman will be able to take it. Sales of computer games will soon overtake LP sales. And as the games boom gets bigger, the hype that goes with it is going to bring it even closer to the pop scene. Hi, this is Richard Skinner. With a countdown of this week's top computer games. Race, that's number six. At five, it's Asteroids. Panic, that's number four. Cosmiads at number three. At number two, Wacky Waiters and... Number one. Arcadia.